until December 31st, uh, because some some people were receiving their money you know, even as late as uh, October, September. So you don't get the benefit of a full 24 weeks. You get until December 31st. So that's that's your your covered period. Uh, when you file for forgiveness, you can choose a shorter period. So if you spend your money in 10 weeks, uh, th then that's your covered period. You call it you call it short. You're, just keep in mind your bank is still expecting it to be 24, so that 10 months after deferral is uh, is is going to still be out there. Uh, I will try to keep an eye on the chat. So if there's anything that pops up, uh, you know, if you have any questions, you can throw it in there. So some new things that have come up is um, if there is a sale of your business, and it doesn't have to be a complete sale if, if you have taken on a partner in the business, uh, or if you have sold assets of the business. So let's say uh, be, because of COVID-19, you're downsizing, you're selling off equipment and selling off assets. Uh, that requires permission by your lender and the SBA. And I have a list of documentation that's required for you to, to submit to your lender. Uh, and you have to get approval. Uh, if you are doing a business sale and you may not want to wait for the SBA to approve, you know, we don't know how long this uh, approval process will take. Uh, this was kind of a, a surprise that, that came out uh, just about a month ago. Uh, you can put up an escrow of the amount of the loan that you're looking to get forgiven. Uh, and you put that escrow with the bank that gave you the loan. So if you, if you received a $100,000 loan, you give your bank back $100,000, they hold it um, until the approval occurs, but you can sell your business or do whatever transaction and, and not have to wait for that. Uh, I don't know what this means. I, I guess if you had uh, this transaction prior to this uh, coming out, uh, I believe you still need to get this permission. Uh, this is not really anything new, but it is a question that uh, comes up quite often, and, and it's not very po uh, popularly known. Uh, we all know about this, I, I hope, that there's a limit. You cannot pay an employee more than $100,000 annualized. So on an eight-week period, that works out to 15385 If you go 24 weeks, then... The, the, the ratio is 46,154. What came out late in the game is the SBA came in and said, ah, but that's for non-owners. If you're an owner, you get a different set of numbers. Uh, and the SBA considers an owner anyone that owns more than 5% in the business. So if there's a 1% a or 2% owner, that, that they're not considered an owner. They don't look at that person as having control of, of the business with less than 5%. Uh, for owners, you're limited to 15385 or 15.385% 15 of what you made in 2019 or what that owner made in 2019. So uh, I had a company not long ago, the business opened in 2019 and the owner only took a minimal like ten thousand uh, dollars. Unfortunately, that owner is limited to about fifteen hundred dollars. That that fifteen percent of what they had last year. Uh, if you use the twenty-four week period as an owner, you don't go up to that forty-six thousand dollar amount that a, a normal employee has. You're limited to twenty. Uh, and if you use a period of time between eight and 24, it's whatever that, that proration is between the 15,000 and, and 20. Uh, another th thing that came up late in the game, and there's not a whole lot of press on this, uh, also for owners, is that this uh, limit is across all businesses. So if, if uh, an owner has three different businesses and the owner's on the payroll of each in order to, to draw salary uh, then it is this limit combined 
and you can choose you know which company you want to have that on but you, you only get it on one uh, so the, the forgiveness process that that open you are going to file through your lender so you have to wait for them to open up uh, their portal uh, when you do file the lender has 60 days to make a decision um, this statement came out uh, very early on in April that if the loan was more than two million, uh, you in essence would be audited. So it, it goes beyond just the lender making the decision; it's SBA, and we're going to—I put three asterisks on that. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, and even though the the lender makes a decision in sixty days, the, the lender decides they don't have to seek SBA approval. The SBA Treasury there is a six-year audit period so you know when the dust settles two years three years or four years down the line the sba can come back and say we we, we are questioning uh, your, your spending we need more evidence or whatever it may be uh, so the loan process has been open for three months and we now have three different applications uh, and I honestly don't see an end to this. I see another application coming out uh, because as uh, if you've been watching the news uh, you know, before the election, there's talk about automatic forgiveness. And uh, the number that keeps getting thrown around is $150,000. You know, we, we believe there still is going to be an application with that. Um, and while other bills have gotten deadlocked on different items, this automatic forgiveness seems to uh, kind of uh, come back in, in each one so I, I think it we will have an automatic forgiveness at some point which goes back to my earlier slide of, of don't rush you know definitely if you have a loan less than 150 we may find out come January that uh, that something passes and you may not have had to do all the, the work for forgiveness if, if you wanted to file this now so I that's my suggestion to wait so talk about the forms we're going to talk about the easiest one first it is the 3508 s and you know you can say the s stands for super or simple or short it's not really automatic forgiveness it's pretty close to it the condition is your loan has to be 50,000 or less which, uh, according to the SBA, is, a, is about two thirds of all loans out there. Uh, there is an affiliation rule, so if you have a lot of businesses and it adds up to two million or more, you, you can. Uh, using this form, you don't have to meet FTE counts, so you can violate the salary and wage reduction. Uh, I put there's no math involved on the form. Uh, it's not quite an automatic forgiveness because you do still have to spend the funds appropriately. This is the form, and there's there's not much else to it. This is it. So that's why I say you know you, you can, your loan's under fifty. This is it. Uh, you know you probably do want to file now if you, if you've spent the funds appropriately because I, I don't know if it can get any easier than this. You, you put your loan amount. They do want to know the forgiveness amount because it's not given. They're taking your word that you did spend the funds appropriately. And if you want to be honest, and if you didn't spend the funds appropriately, you can ask for less forgiveness than the, the total. Uh, but that's it. With any application you submit, there is a page, and, and I think I've truncated some off the bottom of here. Uh, with any application you do have to make certifications and i highlighted a few things in here so even on the s as i mentioned you still have to spend the funds appropriately uh, you know you still have to submit documentation which we'll talk about and uh, the bullet point that's in the forgiveness uh, same one that was on the loan application if you are not honest in your reply your your, your form uh, they are looking to uh, just seek criminal uh, 30 years or not more than a million dollars. And uh, 
every day I get a news feed of, of another business who caused a fraud in the PPP process, and they are going after these uh, these businesses very, very tough. Uh, documentation, this is from the S form, and it, it is pretty much the same on, on all the others. Uh, when it comes to payroll costs, I, I've seen questions come into our office of people wanting a lot of different reports, and uh, somebody even wanted to know all the check numbers because they were looking to get uh, copies of canceled checks, payroll checks. And I intercept those questions, and I have to take them back to the instructions. You know, I don't care what the bank is asking for. Uh, I have found that many banks do not know what they're doing, unfortunately. They they just don't have this process right in, in a lot of different ways and a lot of information. Uh, but I would say this here, this is the instructions. And as a payroll service, we are seen as a trusted party to pr provide reports. So on A, it's bank account statements or third party payroll provider reports. What that means is a payroll register. That is a report that documents compensation paid to employees. And that's it, payroll register. You also need to provide copies of tax returns. And that is in essence the, the 941. And if you're not a nonprofit, you have unemployment tax. Uh, or I should say, if you're a small nonprofit, you may not have unemployment tax. Uh, but the 941 in, in, in Florida, the RT6 form. And that's it as it comes to uh, payroll costs. Uh, they do want tax returns on all overlapping quarters. So I, I spoke to a company uh, just earlier this week. Their covered period ended with a check date on October 5th. And for whatever reason, they want to file now. And uh, I told them, unfortunately, they can't. October 5th is in the third quarter. The documentation required is going to require the fourth quarter tax return, which is not going to be ready until January. So if, you, if October 1st touches your covered period, uh, you, you definitely have to wait till next year. All right, so for those who don't fit in that under $50,000 loan, you have the, the next form, which is the EZ form. And uh, I was very happy when I saw, saw this come out a month after uh, the process opened. It, it is very easy. There are two conditions. Uh, you must not have reduced anyone's salary or hourly rate. Uh, and that is literally their, their salary. So if someone is earning a thousand dollars a week, and you cut their salary to seven fifty because business was slow. That's acceptable. You just can't go more than twenty five percent reduction. The second condition, which you have a, a one or the other, is in essence you must not have reduced your FTE count, your your full time equivalent employees, uh, unless you had an exemption. So, uh, for example, if if you were a restaurant, you probably meet number two, which in essence states that the CDC, OSHA, you know, restaurants were not able to operate in their capacity. Uh, to me, that seems like it, it meets that condition for two. So I, I could reduce my FTE count and still be safe to use this form. Uh, the easy form. I had to break it out into two screenshots, but it's still pretty easy. The first one is just basic information. Uh, again, you're just reiterating the loan amount, how much your forgiveness is, your, your pay period, uh, pay frequency, your covered period. And this is the, the, the application. This is the bulk of it. Uh, one suggestion that I've made to, to many is, uh, you know, when we all have to spend the money in an eight-week period, you had to come up with other things to spend it on because you, you basically got two and a half months of payroll 
that you had eight weeks to spend it, which means you had to include rent and utilities. And there was questions of, oh, does cell phone count as telephone? And, you know, there's questionable things. And when it extended to 24 weeks, my suggestion is just go 100% payroll. You're going to simplify your process because non-payroll costs, you need lease agreements and uh, your mortgage agreement and bills and canceled checks, and it's just a lot of documentation. But as you saw from the payroll costs, you just need two things. It's payroll register and tax returns. So if you don't violate any FTE counts and you, know, you go 10 weeks or 12 weeks, whatever it is, and you go 100% payroll costs, then literally you're putting that number on line one. The number goes again on line five. The loan amount, whatever the, the loan amount was. Line seven just proves that your payroll cost was at least 60%. So that's going to end up being a very large number. So forgiveness is going to be your loan amount. It's very simple, as I'm sure you will agree. Um, application. Uh, now, this was uh, meant to be just a quick half-hour session. You know, PPP, I've, I've done one-hour sessions, and, and that's not enough time. Uh, so I am not going to go into the 3508 form. I was going to throw screenshots up here, but it is a five-page application. There are tables, there are schedules, there's just a lot data that's needed, you're going to have to submit probably spreadsheets. Um, so I, at all costs, I would suggest staying away from this, you know, trying to meet one of those qualifications under the EZ and, uh, and, and go from there. All right, so this came up just two weeks ago, and it I got wind of it, not through the SBA or Treasury. This has not been publicly announced by either of those organizations, uh, but it does exist. As, as we know, when the loan first came out, uh, the SBA said, we're gonna review and approve any PPP loan that is in excess of $2 million. Well, now they are, putting their money where their mouth is, so, so to speak. They have issued, uh, I believe it's a nine page questionnaire. And it's for it basically back in April when very large companies, you know, I put Ruth's Chris, Shake Shack, uh, the, uh, I think the LA Lakers uh, were, were in there. Many organizations were getting large loans. I think the LA, LA Lakers was four. $0.7 million. Uh, Auto Nation got $77 million. Um, I think Roots Chris and Shake Shack may have been $10 million each. Uh, and, and there was a lot of outcry saying, wait a minute, does the LA Lakers need a PPP loan to, to stay in business? I, you know, I, I don't think so. So in, uh, in late April, uh, that's when this loans of two million came in. Um, all of those businesses I just mentioned all felt the heat and they returned the money. Um, in, in essence, the SBA came out and said, all right, if you got money and you give it back, we will uh, we'll, we'll kind of wash our hands that you ever took the money in the first place. Uh, because there is, as we, we saw, criminal prosecution for, uh, saying you needed the money when you really didn't. So these, these organizations were happy to, to kind of send that money back. Uh, if your loan is over $2 million, I would say definitely look at these two forms. Again, they're, they're not public out there on the SBA or Treasury. Uh, I, I don't know if it's meant to be a surprise when you go to file with your bank that this, uh, you'll get this form. Uh, and you'll have 10 days to respond to this form when you get it from your bank. So, you know, be prepared. Uh, it goes into a lot of details. They wanna know your bank account balance on all business bank accounts as of March 31st. They wanna know uh, uh, 
profit and loss and revenue and uh, anyone in, in the organization getting paid more than 250000 It's It's just on and on. And uh, I, I would definitely review this form and, and maybe even seek legal uh, help on this before you file. Uh, because a lot is at, at, at stake. If the SBA finds that you took the funds and you had liquidity, then that violates that uh, that clause we saw from. All right, this is a uh, kind of not new. It, it came as a surprise. Uh, you know, the first part: when your debt is forgiven, uh, or I say when any debt is forgiven. Normally, that is a taxable transaction. You know, not having to give a, someone else money is basically you getting money. The IRS says, wait, you got income, we're going to tax it. But in the CARES Act, it was written that this PPP, when it's forgiven, it would not create taxable income, and people were happy. And that was until the IRS went through it. And on April 30th, they put out this notice. 2020-32, and uh, the, the IRS found a loophole, and they said, okay, yeah, we're not going to treat it as income, but all those expenses that you paid, so if you got a $50,000 PPP loan, you know, you use that forgiveness, it's forgiven, you spent it all on payroll, well, now that $50,000 in payroll you cannot deduct off of your profitability and taxability of the business. So you, you will end up paying tax uh, on that. So I threw down there, you know, that may be a, a deciding point to file for forgiveness now. You may say, you know what, I, I'll, I'll take the loss uh, or the, the gain this year because I have enough other losses to offset it. But uh, so that could be a deciding point of if you want to get it forgiven. Um, so I wouldn't wait on that if that is the case because we're, we're, we're kind of approaching December and I'm sure the banks are going to take a little while. Uh, last slide, I know I want to wrap this up in like one minute. and don't really have time for questions, but uh, my blog.paymaster.com is, is a great resource. If you go there, uh, on that page, there's a little search bar on the bottom right. You can type in PPP. And uh, I, I think I've written six or seven articles on the PPP. And so, for example, there's the latest one. I wrote a, a very detailed article on that two million. So you can read into those. So, anyways, looks like we're right on time, 145. I'm going to see everyone over in my other room on the 2021 tax update. All right. See you all over there.